What is up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Grady, and I listen to country music and whatever else I want to. And for today's video, let's talk about some stuff that ain't country. Because right now, it just seems like there is something in the air where like country music is being attacked from so many different directions. And we gotta name that stuff. And let's play a little game called That Ain't Country. This game is just played by me talking about stuff that ain't country. And the first one and main one that really inspired this video is, as I'm sure you've heard, this song, Old Town Road by Lil Nas X. I got the horses in the back, horse stock is attached. I've been in a valley, you ain't been up off that porch now. Can't nobody tell me nothing. So this song is a meme. Lil Nas X is an Atlanta-based rapper, and he put out this song called Old Town Road last year, and it has kind of become a TikTok meme. Yes, TikTok. Country music TikTok. We're back here. I have a whole video on this, and at the time that I recorded that, uh, the, the horses in the back meme had not happened, but now there's like a thousand videos like this. No more. I got the horses in the back. They're all very cringy. They're all very dumb. It's just a fun meme where kids are putting on cowboy stuff. But this song is now becoming a real legitimate hit. It's like the, the early 2019 Harlem Shake is this kind of like, I've got the horses in the back meme. And it's not going to live for a long time, but it's certainly blowing up right now. And where it's really blowing up is on the country charts. And that's kind of whack, because this is a rap song. Yes, it is loosely about a cowboy. It's about a guy on his tractor, drinking purple cough syrup, looking at boobies in a Gucci cowboy hat. And artists can do what they want. If that That's an artist's prerogative to make that song, and it's a listener's prerogative to buy that song. I'm not actually even mad at Lil Nas X at all for making this song. Who I'm mad at is like the gatekeepers over at iTunes and over on Billboard that are letting this song chart as a country song. I think that's really, really messed up. So like right now on iTunes, this is literally the number two song in country music, and it's not a country song at all. This is a hip hop song uh, that, that I guess is about horses. Um, but I mean, Dark Horse by Katy Perry would not be considered a country song. Uh, Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones, also not a country song. And I don't get why we're letting this song be considered a country song. This is a trap song. It, it, I mean, it has a trap beat. It is a rap song. I mean, it, it, country music is about stringed instruments, simple melodies, and, and vocal harmony. Those are kind of the musical hallmarks of country music. But there's this whole rise of like yeehaw culture right now that is basically just the fashion of cowboy stuff. And and cool, people can have fun and dress up in that stuff, but people are trying to make like yeehaw culture like a whole movement. And it, it's so stupid. I mean, it's gonna be a flash in the pan, but it's really, really frustrating to me that uh, Old Town Road is being allowed to be kind of popularly considered as a country song, because I think that really does damage to the whole genre. As much as country music sort of opens up the gates and says like, oh, we're gonna allow anyone to say whatever they do is country, that really starts to eliminate like a lot of boundaries that are there for a good reason. I mean, genre boundaries, in some ways, artists think that they're really annoying, but you know, they're also good because they protect certain sounds and instruments. And if we allow a rap song to be called a country song uh, and just hijack the hot country songs chart, and suddenly this is the biggest country hit, well then in people's minds, this is what country music is. And then the fiddle even more becomes the redheaded stepchild. The mandolin, who's gonna know what that even is? These instruments just get kind of pushed off the scene because country music couldn't stand up for itself and say, this is what our sound is. And, and, and there already is a catch-all genre. It's called pop. And that's what the point of it is, is that it kind of includes all of the genres. So I think this is really annoying. I think it's really, really destructive to country music. I get that it's all in fun. I get that it's a meme. And who wants to be like the person chiding a meme and saying like, this isn't cool. It's funny when people are making those videos, but I'm really annoyed at, at people like Billboard letting this just be called a country song. When... Three years ago, Billboard, remember when you wouldn't let Green River Ordinance, who's a band out of Texas, even chart on the country chart? When they had to be on the folk chart because for some reason this wasn't country enough for you? It all feels really whack. It feels like there's like political machinations in place, but I don't really know what they are because Lil Nas X isn't signed to anyone right now. There's a bidding war over him, so I don't know if there is an advocate in Nashville that is saying, you know, 
paying some bills to some people to get this to be called a country song but i think it's really whack that it is and it's not cute and it's not funny and country music like you know take yourself more seriously than just letting anyone walk in say like something is country when it's clearly not and just use your name as a marketing gimmick because that's all this is that's all that like it, it seems like a lot of yeehaw culture is which is just using some of the imagery popularly associated with cowboy emojis and 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 cowboys and and the american west and turning it into just a fashion statement and again fun but not actually funny when it starts to mean that actual country artists that are putting their work in that are out in nashville that want to be known as country artists that love country music deeply and its traditions deeply and its sound deeply and are simple little storytellers when they're getting pushed down the chart for a meme rap song that's messed up and that ain't country. Quick update to this story. I was about to post this video, but then the new Billboard charts came out and Billboard has made the correct decision to take Old Town Road off the country charts. That's awesome. Good work, Billboard. Uh, sorry about the little rant I just made about you, but I'm still a little salty about Green River Ordinance and I think it's kind of weird that it happened in the first place, but I think they made the right decision and now all the other places, like on Apple Music, uh, that this is listed as a country song, let's hope they follow suit. Next non-country thing so the next thing i wanted to mention is this band called king calloway king calloway is someone that you may have heard some like rumblings about them if you follow kind of the country twitter sphere in the last few months because they're these guys that are being marketed as a country boy band they're started by robert dayton who's one of the executive producers of the country music association and the cma awards and uh, his son is in the band and then there's some guys from england some and they've some from america and they've been assembled into this country boy band and it feels like they've got the red carpet rolled out for them in nashville and it's been very interesting to watch they have a new song called world for two which last week was the most added song at country radio make a change make a choice all the noise we can drown it out so uh the industry is is embracing these guys and they got to make their debut live performance at the grand Ole opry at the freaking mother church of country music so what i find really interesting about king calloway other than the fact that um you know it's just generic pop music this is like ed sheeran light and I'm not, they, they sound fine to be honest with me like they, they really do sound fine. They sound like a pop act. They sound like they want to be Ed Sheeran. And they're so overstyled that it's kind of cringeworthy to just look at, look at it. But what I really hate about kind of King Calloway's arrival onto the scene is that all of the marketing around it is really boasting in the fact that this is an assembled, inorganic product of a band. You know, there's these like loving articles in Billboard uh, how King Calloway are bringing the boy band to country music. And it's talking to like the, you know, the guys that assembled them who like Robert Dayton and John Schoen and Jason Halbert, these big like music directors and stuff and how they found these guys and put them together and had them record together. And it feels like you're reading an article about the history of NSYNC and they're very proudly and excitedly saying like, we want to stretch the term of what country can be. We want to put, uh, we want to put a boy band out there. And you know, it sucks because country music, the whole thing that makes it beautiful and the songwriting beautiful is it's about real life. And boy bands, by their very nature, they're kind of about the fake escapist manufactured product. You know, that even is kind of the fun of when you were a fan growing up. Hello, I had every Backstreet Boys album growing up and it was kind of fun knowing they'd been put together and kind of like had to figure out how to become friends and they had to learn how to dance and they had to, you know, all that stuff. That That's part, part of the product. You're buying into it. And it, pop music is a great platform for that. That's kind of a lot of people's entry point are these sort of really uh, like silly in a way manufactured pop acts. There's a place for that in music. Now, I don't love that it's coming into country music and I don't love at all. In fact, I hate that the industry is so just sort of like fawningly 
allowing this to be the norm where it's like okay here's a completely you, you don't even have to go digging for it you don't have to be a reporter to see okay well this guy's son is in the band he's a very powerful man in country music they're calling it a boy band they debuted at the grand Ole opry their video premiered on people.com i used to work for time inc uh who owns people now i think they're owned by meredith but you know, People's one of the biggest sites in America. You don't get to just debut your debut video on People uh, without some major industry connections. And so it all just feels very predetermined. It feels like the fans don't even have a say in whether or not this song becomes a hit. Now country radio is on board. Now they're getting these fawning profiles and billboard. It's frustrating because it feels like as country fans, we keep getting pushed further and further and further outside of the mainstream conversation, despite the fact that bands like Turnpike Troubadours are blowing up, despite the fact that Cody Johnson is selling tens of thousands of tickets at the rodeo, despite all of these things. Like, it just feels like, or that people loved Casey Musgraves for years before finally, by her winning the Grammy, Country Radio was forced to get on board. It, it just feels like the industry doesn't care what the fans actually think, and they're going to do what they want to do and chase the dollar. And that's really, really, it, it just makes it frustrating. And it feels like the fix is in. And so that's totally what King Calloway feels like to me. And, and even like, you know, we don't want boy bands in country music. It's not about the manufacturing of it. And maybe I'm naive to think that not everything has been manufactured for a long time, but I don't think so. At, at least at least they're pretending though. At least they're pretending it's not all manufactured. Who wants like, who wants this? Who wants this? This high fashion international super group that wants to stretch country music. Doesn't that feel presumptuous to you? So man, whatever. That ain't country. Next non-country thing finally the last story today i want to talk about is one of my favorite country artists who's now just somehow gone off the deep end and that's zach brown zach brown band is just putting out some weird music right now Someone that I used to know. so zach brown band currently is pushing the single someone i used to know that is like a a ish pop song and it has like a whole drop of like that does not sound as good as a regular pop track would and and fans aren't really cottoning to it and it's also confusing because zach brown band has been so rootsy their whole career and so outspoken about being instrumental and um authentic and organic in their sound and uh, even called out Luke Bryan a few years ago and said that That's My Kind of Night was the worst song he'd ever heard. But now it feels like Zach Brown has, you know, like become very L.A. and he works with John Varvatos and he's gotten into fashion and then he had this kind of pop act, Sir Roosevelt. And that was confusing because it felt like he did a 180 a couple years ago. But then he did another 180 and made an album called Welcome Home that was kind of like a back to your roots album. There was even a song on there called Roots. My That was like, it felt like a reassertion of, okay, we have found ourselves again in our musical style, but now we've done a 180 again, and Zach Brown is now making pop music. And he's not only making this song, Someone I Used to Know, which has been out for a few months, and it's in, even included in my Snapchat video, but he's got another new song out now called God Given, that is a, a pretty cringy song to listen to, where he's talking about, <laughs> Veyron Whip, G5 High, you got class that you just can't buy. Um, that's the kind of hook that he sings in this song. And then there's a very awkward rap that just doesn't feel cool at all. It feels very forced. And it has me looking at the Zac Brown band like they're the new band Perry. Like they're a band that had this cool sound and a unique lane. They were kind of this almost jam bandy, really heartfelt, lush, rich musical band. And now it feels like they are just, they have decided they see themselves differently or he has decided he sees himself differently and wants to change his image, almost just in an act of rebellion and, you know, is going to go down this poppier lane. And it doesn't make a lot of sense when you're watching from the outside. And it feels just like when the band Perry took If I Die Young and took all the success of like Better Dig 2 and all those songs and then just decided we want to be a pop band now. We're gonna live, we're gonna live. 
and we want to do it even at the detriment of our career and just kind of committed career suicide but who knows maybe personal fulfillment um but man it's frustrating zach brown was like one of the good guys and it's certainly confusing from a marketing standpoint to frame yourself as this like country defender one day and then this country destroyer the next day i don't get it at all but um i feel like zach brown has gone a little bit crazy and i don't know if that's to do with the divorce uh or or to do with whatever's going on but this just isn't him at i don't know it isn't him at his best and again i, I think artists should do what they want but i'm we're talking fan to fan here you know not grady to any artists we're talking fan to fan about country music and it bums me out to see because I freaking love Zach Brown Band. I really, really think that they brought. You just think of Highway 20 Ride, you know, think of Free. Think of Sweet Annie. Think of how those songs make you feel and think of the booming harmonies and think of the gorgeous music and the soaring vocals. And then think of Gucci bags, stacks on stacks. Like who wants that? Who's asking for that from Zach Brown? It, it just makes me sad, you know? makes me sad and i feel like what's happening there's like a lot of there's country music today i just feel like it's getting attacked from every direction we got old town road is our number two country song we got zach brown wearing crazy hats and singing pop music out in la we got king calloway who is just the ordained new kings of country music um, by being a boy band it's just it's sad i'm just feeling sad today so um all that ain't country. It ain't country. And so I'm going to go back to, you know, uh, listening to my Cactus Blossoms record that I was listening to today um, and just, you know, embrace country music and what country music can be and should be. And there's so much good stuff getting made, but man, some of the stuff right at the top of the industry right now, it ain't country and it's using the name country and it's getting real confusing for a lot of people and there's a little rebellion brewing you can feel it and and that's the beauty of the internet even as you know the internet has also brought us Lil Nas X uh, being a big new country star so people are finding the stuff that's good I trust that we can find the stuff that's good we'll find the stuff that's good together and uh Sorry if I'm a bummer, but let me know what your thoughts are on all this stuff. These are just my opinions, and I would love to know what you guys think about all of these songs kind of encroaching in country music right now. Be thoughtful, and uh, I'll see you guys very soon. Later.